So I just want to, um, in a short video, I, I, I want to put together all the symptoms that one might be able to see after cerebellar damage. Uh, cerebellar damage due to either uh, an inherited ataxia or due to damage due to a tumor or, or a stroke. Um, and, and so the first thing, as you should, I hope you remember from, from um, our anatomy, uh, the neuroanatomy section, is that cerebellar damage will have ipsilateral effects. So remember that there's a, a crossing from uh, the pontine nuclear neuron comes in and crosses, and then the output from the cerebellum also crosses. Uh, at, and so the one place where you can get bilateral cerebellar damage, bilateral cerebellar symptoms, is where there is a, a stroke or a lesion of the crossing of the superior cerebellar peduncle, also called the decussation of the brachium conjunctivum. So a, a stroke there in that caudal part of the midbrain can give you bilateral symptoms. Otherwise, the symptoms will be ipsilateral to the place of the damage. So what types of... of um, symptoms are going to are going to be in evidence well one that we haven't spent too much time on is that there will be a, a, a floppiness so a loss of muscle tone and that is simply due be, to the fact that so much of the output from the uh, cerebellum goes to motor control centers that preferentially target gamma motor neurons so the gamma motor neurons through the gamma loop are uh, facilitating muscle tone. In, that, in their absence, there is uh, a demonstrable loss of muscle tone. So people become floppy. Um, a, another um, sign of cerebellar damage is the decomposition of movement. So movements aren't smooth. You can't do this fast. It's Every piece of it is deliberately made. The decomposition of movement. And another feature of it is dysmetria. The, the movements are not the right length. They might be too short or too long. It doesn't really matter. Um, they're just not to the right place. So this idea that um, as you approach a target, that you, you continue to make um, errors and those errors uh, need to be corrected for and those correct and the corrections are also produce errors and so you 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 get into this um, uh, in continual estimation without ever finding the, the right place um, so that 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 dysmetria is is another cardinal sign now when we think about this this is also sometimes called, at least colloquially, it is called an intentional tremor to distinguish it from a tremor that exists at rest. So there is a resting tremor, and we will see resting tremor as um, a sign of Parkinson's, which is a basal ganglia disorder, um, and, but with cerebellar disorders, at rest, the, there may be no tremor, but as, as one approaches... Um, uh, a target, there is a, a, an increasing amount of, uh, of tremor. That's also known as an intentional tremor. Uh, finally, the uh, cerebellar disorders, uh, uh, many of them, obviously not the inherited ataxias, but, which are degen neurodegenerative diseases, but many of them will improve with time. All right, so that is a, a, a little sidelight symptoms of cerebellar uh, disorders.